Welcome to Integrate of Wednesdays. Today I'm making some tests with the vibraphone plate. We're gonna test fall height, vibraphone angle, pivot position, funnel position, vibraphone surface. I'm thinking about maybe dampening the surface, counterweight system like we have here, or a spring loaded system. And the goals that I'm looking for is consistency of the marbles, of course, a good bounce, and a sweet looking movement. That's what all this is about. Just like in the Animusic Pipe Dream video, I want the vibraphone from plates to move a little when hit. It's to show the audience which note has been played because the marbles are hard to see. Me and Richard from the UK and Phil from the US are trying to solve the CAD of the instrument supports that you see here. And to be able to know where we want the pivot point to be, I had to make some in real life testing to figure out the mechanics of the vibraphone plates. Very important today is that it sounds awful right now. That's why I'm having these. The resonator pipe is not there, it's not mic'd up com correctly and stuff like that. And there's some zzzz in this prototype. Don't worry. Today is not about music, today is about the movement, the physics. As a good scientist, we have to go from the beginning. So let's set the angle to zero. <laughs> never say never with the scientific method. Here we go, zero angle. Not so good. Can go down to 10 degrees like that. I think that's too shallow as well. Yeah, you see the marble is just rolling on the plate. That's not what we want. And that looks like 20 degrees. It's traces of a double bounce. I'm going to drop it from higher, which gives less of a double bounce. I'm getting a better bounce from up here than from 25 centimeters, which is the cadded height. Do you hear that? There's a double hit. But we can note that 35 centimeters fall height is better than 25. 25 degrees, low drop height, high drop height. That looks nice, 25 centimeter drop height. And now I increase the drop height to 35. So what happens if we make it steeper? Oh, that's actually nice. 35 degrees. Aha, maybe it was the balance that was changing. So when I increased the angle, this counterweight up here got more and more reduced. You can see at this point it's gonna fall the other way. So maybe what I was experiencing with the better bounce was the better counterweight. So if we go back to 20 even. So let's do a reference bounce before adding counterweight. Barely clearing. Uh, wait, no, I should not add, I should reduce. Move it a little bit this way. That looks right. Wow, that made a huge difference. And do you remember? Sweet looking movement. One of the goals for today. Oh, I like that. Is it a single hit though? No, that's a double hit. That is not good. That was a double hit. Let's go from 35. That's best. It's not really bouncing. I hate those double hits. They, they are unacceptable. Okay, time to experiment with the pivot. So taking this out, let's jump two steps to this location. So by moving the pivot closer, we're reducing the mass of the whole system. That's interesting and that's pretty good. But it should also take more force for the marble to move the plate because we're closer to the pivot point. Let's find out. Next test. <laughs> 20 degrees, pivot in second position, fall height 25 centimeters. I don't like this. I don't think this is a good idea. Double hit. I'm gonna move the pivot in even closer just to confirm my suspicion. No movement at all, see that? Pivot point closer is not nice right now. Let's try pivot point further away. That will give the marble even more leverage. There, 20 degrees. Drop that one. Sounds like double hits. 30 centimeters. That's some nice anime music stuff. So like four years ago, I emailed Matthias Vandel telling him that I got this idea when I built the first machine. And he said that I couldn't make any music from wood. It would be too difficult. And he was right. <laughs> four years later, I'm still trying. But this looks like anime music. 
it sounds horrendous. There's no resonator pipe now, as I said, there's no microphones. Uh, the audio compression of the camera mic is on auto. So every time the marble hits here, the audio compressor of the camera is choking. Okay, we have found a sweet spot. 25 degrees. I moved the pivot all the way back. Now I need to add some extra weight here. So 25 degrees, double hit. Try two consecutive. Sweet spot of the pivot is from this first test and up here to the second. I have an idea to dampen the sound. As you can hear, it's very, very trebly. On real mallets, you can see they sell them in very, very different hardnesses. So like this one is softer than the green one. And then rubber is even more trebly and this is brass. That's the most pingiest. So brass is like what we have with the marble, right? But I like this green sound. So basically what I wanna do is to come from that to that. We can't add dampening on the marble itself, but my idea is to add some kind of little pad here, an impact pad. And I tried this with masking tape before, and that actually works. But I wanna see how that affects the bounce. So I realized maybe a rubber pad can both make a softer, nicer sound, plus maybe it can give a nice bounce. This glove is actually great bounce. You can even hear some vibraphone there if you compare the bounce. Instead of masking tape, I'm going to try to cut a little bit of this working glove. Whoa! Beautiful! Well, that's almost like the green one. Another thing I learned from Matthias Vandel. Don't be shy of taking the glue stick out. This is going to be easy to clean away from the vibraphone. This will dampen the sustain, but that's actually no problem. This material feels perfect. The sound you hear is bad because of the hinging. <laughs> Did you see that bounce? That's great. We're onto something here. Much nicer bounce. I'm gonna make the pad smaller right away though, which will also prove how actually tight hit spot we have with the marble release. I don't think I need anything bigger than that. Okay, rubber pad, 25 degrees, 25 centimeter. Mythbuster style in three, two, one. That is a huge success. So much nicer bounce. Do you see that? And so much nicer sound as well. I would say that this rubber is a tad too thick. But the arc we're getting now is just completely different. I'm gonna take a sideways shot of that. Now you get more this and the music feeling that the marble is bouncing. That's like what, what I wanna see. I don't want the marble to just creep along the thing, almost making a double hit. <laughs> Let's get that in slow-mo. This is good. This is good. Okay, so I'm ready for Test number two, this is spring steel. I'm going to try the same test, but instead make some kind of leaf spring like this. Oh, that looks promising. Because if we can use a leaf spring instead of the counterweight, we can make a much, much more compact design. Okay, now I have a combination of counterweight and leaf spring. So I'm just going to put the spring a little random like this. I never worked with spring steel before. This is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. It's a really long leaf spring now though. It's going all the way down there. Let's try a bounce. Nice. Definitely a defined little movement. That's beautiful. I'm very happy with the leaf spring. Let's see if I hold it rigidly here. Yeah, when I held it rigidly here, it just made one bounce and then still. So now I want to know if the small weight of the wood here has any effect. Now we have absolutely no counterbalance here. Oh, that made a huge difference. Look, that's not at all as tight now. Let's try the stronger spring steel then. Yeah, we still have a good movement. It's a little duller now actually. But I do think the 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 little counterweight that we had made a difference, but I'm happy with this. 
I'm so pleased with the rubber pad. That was like the savior. Last iteration, normal compression springs. I've just put three one in there. I mean, it's the least nice one so far, but I think these compression springs are too tight already. If I don't like this long back and forth, maybe you can reduce that. It's definitely the solution that takes up least space. The one concern right now is that I want the pivot point to be far back. And I know on the real machine, there are a lot of stuff right behind the vibraphone. So we have to check how far back we can put the pivot point. But yeah, this was a huge success. The rubber pair was great. Fall height, higher than 25 is okay with rubber. Angle, I think 25 degrees. Pivot position, far back. 170 millimeter. Funnel position, okay, it's very consistent. Vibraphon surface, elastic rubber, brilliant. Counterweight, plus spring. Consistency, yes. Good bounce, yes, because of the rubber. Sweet looking movement, yes, especially the counterweight plus spring. So, absent from today's test are these resonator tubes. They are the things creating the vibraphone sound. Together with this shaft here, these are vibrato paddles that open and closes the resonance tubes. And these resonance tubes need to be in different length. And since we're changing these notes during the concert, we will also have to adjust the length of these resonator tubes during the concert. The specification requirements for the vibraphone assembly is daunting to say the least. So this was the position before the test. So after the test, we decided to rotate the vibraphone five degrees along its own axis, like this. And we also moved it 50 millimeters straight down there and 50 millimeter forward there. Higher marble fall height and a better angle and also give room for a much longer pivot. So you can see behind here we have the programming wheel, but since we're moving it, we made all this space so we can move the pivot point pretty far back for that sweet looking movement. And you can see down here, Phil is experimenting with a coiled leaf spiral spring, a double one in this case, for the snare drum holding arm. More on that later. Thank you so much for watching. Hooray for the rubber pad. Yeah. It's too slow.